Hey there, welcome back to Dimension Quest. In my previous video, I provided a look into the Ubuntu Linux desktop that I provide for attendees to use during the modern applications and multi-cloud LiFi enablement offered to VMware partners and employees. This video steps through the build process for that desktop that was used in the last video. So in order to get started, you'll need to clone my GitHub repo that I have showing on the screen here. Now I like to load up Visual Studio Code and open the entire repo folder in there so that I have easy access to the various files. You can see here that I have a couple different configuration files, one of which is the vsphere.auto.pkrvars.hcl.example file. I've already copied my .example to an extension that does not have .example, and I have that highlighted here in the video. Once you've created your file from my example, go through each of the lines and make sure that you've provided accurate values for your lab environment. Once you've confirmed that you have everything ready for that file, go and make a copy of the common.auto.pkrvars.hcl.example file and just name it without the .example extension. Now in this one, you'll need to do the same thing. Go through each of the lines and make sure that the values are set for your lab environment and your preferences. Once you've duplicated the file and you have it ready to customize, scroll up to the top and adjust the admin account or your build username that you wanna have. By default here, I have it set as VM admin with a build password of my password dash 22 exclamation mark. Now the encrypted password is built using a special command and I'll show you that here in just a moment. But first, let me go ahead and change my build password to VMware1Bang. You know, the commonly used VMware hands-on labs password. If we scroll over here to the right, we can see echo space, single quote, VMware1 exclamation, single quote, is getting piped into the make password command. So if you need to create your own encrypted password, you can go ahead and use that same command. Now, once you've gone through this whole file and customized everything to your liking, go into your terminal and make sure that the build.sh file is executable. You can do a chmod plus x space build.sh to make sure that that's set. And once it is executable, just put a dot forward slash build.sh to kick off the build process. Now we can see here that my build process is already underway. I've sped up the, uh, the clip here so that we don't have to sit through the entire thing and wait. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that I have opened up a console to the VM. So we can see that it has already mounted the ISO and it's begun building our Ubuntu VM. The initial build of the Ubuntu VM and the cloud init is completing here and it's rebooted. So the next thing that's going to happen is the scripts build folder files are going to be processed. You can browse through that in Visual Studio Code or through my repository to see what all is included in the build folder. Okay, so the script part is has come to an end and we can see here that a snapshot has been created. If you look at the green text in the bottom right of the corner and it is performing an export there. So that means that it's going to shut down the VM, create a snapshot of it, export the OVA file or excuse me, the, the OVF file with the VMDK so that I can easily import this if I needed to uh, provide it to someone else. 
Now, we're not quite done yet. Due to the way Ubuntu works, um, we still need a, a bit of customization that needs to get done. And we'll have to power on the VM and get logged in as our build user in order to complete that. So one of the output files here is the manifest. And we can see that it's in a JSON format. It provides a lot of information about the VM that was just built using Packer. Go ahead and close that and we'll minimize Visual Studio Code out of the way. Now we'll click back over to our VM in Virtual Center. Let's go ahead and bring the uh, vCenter to full screen. Take a look at our snapshot. There we go. Clean install. That's what I had my configuration set for. And if we scroll down and we take a look at the notes, I do provide the build user username and password in there. You can modify your config files to not add that if you don't want that to show up in your description notes. So now that it's powered on, I'm going to launch the web console here so that we can see everything boot up. Now within my repo under the scripts folder, you'll find a folder called run once. And when we get logged in here manually, these scripts in that run once folder are going to be processed. Now I did it this way because there are several different applications and scripts that do require GNOME to be loaded and active. And that's not really available during the initial Packer build process with the post-processing. So here I go, I'm getting logged in as my VM admin account. Very briefly, we can see the nine dots in the bottom left corner and we can see our little overview here of GNOME. And very quickly, we can see that things are starting to change. Now the bar is not over on the left hand side, it is down at the bottom. That's due to a configuration setting that I have. The solid blue background also part of my configs. And we can see that Conkey is getting loaded up there and it shows Ubuntu Modern Apps there as the title. Under desktop status, we can see that it says enabling dash to panel. So that's providing the nicer looking panel down at the bottom. And under pictures folder of the repo, you can see that I have the, um, the Conkey logo there. If you wanted your own logo to show up in Conkey and in the bottom left corner for the applications, all you need to do is before you run your build.sh script, make sure that you put a PNG file named logo with a capital L in the pictures subdirectory of your repo. And that will automatically get placed here on where the Conkey logo is showing. Now during this initial login, we've got a lot of different things that are running. So right now we can see the HashiCorp tools are being installed. The dash to panel at the bottom is already starting to get some of the custom icons there. We can see that Terminator and Postman and Ramina are already installed. Now we are installing the variety wallpaper changer, the one password client. Now this does take a while to get completed. So I'll just go ahead and mute for the moment and we'll get back in a little bit. Now, once all of the customization has completed for the um, automated stuff there, we, just, we can see the desktop status showing is ready. You'll want to go into each of your applications and make any final adjustments, whether it's adding additional extensions to Visual Studio Code, changing the layout of VS Code, maybe updating the favorites across the bottom. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and remove Brave from the favorites. If you wanted to add other things there, you'll need to do all this stuff right now because we're going to get this whole VM prepared for reuse. Once you have everything customized, then you'll want to um, do an SSH over to the VM. Make sure that your SSH is working properly. Once you've connected, change to the super user root. So sudo space su and go into roots home directory. You'll see that there is a prep-clone.sh file in there. Now what that script does is prepares the VM for cloning operations. This is one of the things that I do for the Horizon desktop. So as an example, at this point of the process, I would typically join the VM to the domain, install the Horizon agent, make sure that everything's configured properly, do a reboot, make sure things are looking good, and then I would come in and run this prep clone. So once the prep clone is done, it clears things like the machine ID, cleans up the cache, copies the VM admin or whatever your build user is into the slash etc slash scale folder so that when your Horizon users log into the desktop and they get a new account, 
all of these customizations and favorites and all the different settings that you've done will carry on over into their new account that's being created there on the Horizon desktop. Now I'm going to go ahead and get logged out before I run that because I want to make sure that all the settings are stored. I'm going to make sure that RDP is working. So let's open up Remina here on my local Linux desktop. I'll create a new entry there and uh, get connected to that Ubuntu VM, make sure that things are working properly. Now I do use a special RDP installation script for XRDP to ensure that the audio stuff is working properly. So if you're using this build script, your end result should be an Ubuntu desktop with audio support. There we go, we'll bring it up to full screen and I can see that I've got my custom desktop there. I'll close out of this um, Nextcloud client. It's a good idea to launch your Visual Studio code before you do your final capture to ensure that any of the extensions that require reloads have that reload completed first. I'm gonna go into variety and make adjustments there. Change wallpaper is defaulted 10 minutes. I'll go ahead and change that default down to five minutes. And we actually saw this variety wallpaper effect changing in the last video where I did the Live Fire desktop tour video. All right, now let's just do a quick preview. I clicked on next to make sure that it's loading up and we can see that it is. We'll hit next again. I went into Remina and I adjusted to go full screen there. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you appreciate the video, hit that like button, subscribe and that bell icon if you wanna get notified of my next video release. Thanks and have a great week.